Welcome in my uh, studio, the Lego Welt studio in uh, Die Hague, Holland, the Netherlands. Um, I'm going to show you a bit around for making this uh, soundtrack uh, project. And the story is about this uh, girl called uh, Samantha Tapferstern. And she lives in a kind of a medium sized German uh, city. She has kind of like a, a lonely, uh, little bit depressing life. She works at the synthesizer store. Uh, but then uh, she's not amounting to much and then one day she gets a mysterious email from a, a, a hacker group that lives in a castle deep in the uh, German Alps or maybe it's the Swiss Alps in, in, in that area and um, yeah she goes on a journey and meets up with this uh, hacker team and then uh, all these like mysterious adventures unfold and um, well yeah follow me um, I got some uh, Maybe weird uh, stuff to show you, not, not too extreme, but uh, uh, quite interesting. I'm using a lot of uh, 80s home keyboards for this soundtrack because it kind of fits with a little bit of amateuristic vibe of the animation because it's like uh, hand drawn and stuff. So amateuristic sounds of home keyboards uh, really fit, I think. So um, the first one I'm going to show you is a JVC. A keyboard synthesizer from 1981 called the KB700 and I think it's uh, quite obscure and uh, it transcends a little bit the normal uh, home keyboards because it also has a little uh, monophonic uh, synthesizer built in that you cannot edit it's more like an ARP uh, Pro Soloist and all like buttons are hidden away uh, beneath this um, very 80s uh, shaded, um, what is it, like kind of uh, Bang and Olufs style uh, glass cover, and then you uncover all the buttons. Curiously, there's an, uh, another mini uh, lid here. It's for the professionals. You can uh, do the basically the panning of the sounds. Yeah, the, the sound of this uh, JVC uh, KB700 is, uh, 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 I think it's like analog. I don't, I have no clue what's uh, going on inside, but it, it sounds kind of uh, medieval also, like harpsichord uh, style, and it really fits the animation because there's a lot of scenes that take place in a castle. And um, see, sounds like this, really simple, pure, But uh, very musical and um, uh, yeah, this is basically um, the um, only sound I'm using, but there, there's other stuff in it like a, a, a string. That's more brass. See, re really fun uh, kind of uh, jolly sounds are in here. Let me see if I can... Oh, here's the strings. It's, it's basically like a string ensemble keyboard also. And then you have the synthesizer functions. Uh, how do I turn it off here? See, that's like a, kind of like a monophonic synthesizer. A bit like a ARP Pro Soloist with a little bit of uh, imagination. There's a really nice pan flute in here. You can hear these little artifacts like little clicks. Yeah, I just love this uh, kind of stuff and uh, I found this in the thrift store for uh, 30 euros. And if, if you look at the, the graphics on it, there, that, that's also an um, infinite uh, source of uh, fascination. For example, it says uh, CompuCorder here. So when I saw that in the thrift store, I saw a CompuCorder, fascinating chord uh, key split. And yeah, you think th this is going to be uh, good. And also the, the fonts are really nice, yeah. 
And another um, home keyboard from the, I think it's the late 80s, early 90s, uh, definitely early 90s, uh, maybe, um, yeah, not mid 90s, early 90s is this uh, Yamaha uh, PSS 480, uh, also from the thrift store. I guess, and um, it's basically an uh, FM synthesizer, but it uh, uses only two operators uh, instead of uh, four or uh, six. Interestingly, this uh, uses the same uh, chip uh, that was found on uh, 1990s uh, sound cards for uh, PCs, and the people uh, used to have their uh, music play in the background while they're playing games. and. Um, so it has this very uh, interesting um, RPG fantasy uh, vibe to it. Uh, and, um also sounds really dusty and warm. It, it actually is going through a, a dupe for 18 uh, dB low pass. No, no, it's going to a 12 dB. SEM filter from Dupfer doesn't do much to the sound, but uh, just warms it a, a little bit more uh, up or something. So th these are probably the warmest uh, FM sounds you can get. And uh, you can edit the sounds. It, it is a synthesizer, uh, be it very uh, spart spartanic. But yeah, my favorite sound is, I guess, this string sound. So, that's so much. Uh, emotion, like it's crying, t tear jerking. So that's the PSS 480, also used in this animation for the same reason. It's a little bit amateuristic and uh, yeah, just fits the vibe for that. And um, also used this is uh, Prophet 5, which is, uh, yeah, there's not much uh, uh, to say about, I guess most people know what a Prophet 5 is. Uh, curiously, I was very lucky with this one because it has the most uh, beautiful um, wood uh, grain, just for show, I guess. Not, not, not entirely, of course, it also sounds really nice. An amazing thing of this uh, new Prophet 5 is that it has uh, aftertouch velocity so I can go like of course th there's a light years of contrast between uh, this thing uh, Yamaha PSS 480 and this there they're like the op opposites uh, from each other uh, like how the sound is like uh, luxurious and, and, and broad and fat and this is like feeble but uh, if you put them together that gives a very interesting uh, contrast you know now it's a little bit out of tune or something I don't know also sounds like these like if you're making a soundtrack, you can just have like two notes of this and then... Oh, that's three. But... That's, that's sometimes all you need. And well, that's a micro station from Cork, um, which was, a, I think, 2010 it came out. And I'm pretty sure it was a complete flop uh, for Cork, but uh, it's one of my favorite uh, synthesizers. It's basically a um, um, micro version of the, uh, what is it, um, Cork Triton, I think, uh, like a workstation, but it can do these amazing cool 
road style pianos and you can program them like really uh, crazy with amp simulations and filters and you can hear like the see it uh, uh, distorts a bit if you got to be careful with the volume this is it And yeah, you can hear like, like the tape or uh, vinyl cracking, which is an effect on there and it is, it's really nice. And you can do extreme like weird uh, noise scapes, like a uh, modular style, like. And then it has a little joystick here and you can go like. Uh, the, the thing is, um, it is a uh, uh, the, the chip inside is maybe a little bit um, slow, um, cannot uh, handle too much. Because, for example, this sound is too much for it. If I go to another sound now, it it will keep on playing, and it doesn't stop. See, even if I play another sound over it. So it, it kind of crashed or something, but it, it, that's like a nice little uh, characteristic of this thing. So the only way to stop it is just to turn it on, uh, off, I mean, and then, um, on again. Um, yeah, the Quark Microstation, it's also really lightweight, doesn't weigh anything, so that's fun. And here we have the uh, sequential Oberheim OB6, uh, which is a uh, really cool uh, synthesizer, of course. Um, I always wanted an Oberheim, like an OBX or OBXR uh, or whatever they're called. I used to have a Matrix 1000, uh, which was fun, but also very slow and, and cumbersome because it's like a wreck. And um, so when this came out, I thought, oh yeah, that, that's, uh, that's really cool. And um, of course, the cool thing is that it has a sequencer. Play it. And it's really uh, musical also, because you can like just add another oscillator. Yeah, basically for a track, or especially in a soundtrack, you can just have this sequence uh, running for a few minutes and then tweak the knobs. And that's, uh, I guess, so well uh, uh, thought about by uh, Tom Oberheim, I guess. Uh, or maybe it's just a coincidence or something. Um, and of course, the, the magic in, the, in Oberheim's sense is always the filter. Uh, for example, you have this sound and now it's on a low pass but you can uh, change it that it's both low pass and high pass and then something wonderful happens. See, it, it, uh, it's the same sound, but it goes through a different filter, like a 50%, and uh, so it sounds like a different sound. It almost sounds like a string sound. Um, the, I, I'm not sure if, if they thought about that, that's something that uh, the envelopes um, uh, are attached to the high pass that it opens up more or something, but... So you can just freak out and... Yeah, that's the Oberheim, and here I have some uh, rack stuff. I'm really into 19-inch uh, rack. This stuff you could get really cheap, like a few years ago, uh, almost for free, like old uh, 80s and 90s uh, effect uh, boxes, 
like the Roland Depp 5, which is a 12-bit reverb and sounds really, really warm. I can I put this cork uh, monopoly through it. But uh, yeah, that's a Roland Depp 5. I got a SDE2500, which is a digital delay um, that can sample a, a very small uh, sample. So you can kind of use it as a looper or to make like ambient pads. And um, an Akai S612, which is uh, one of the first samplers from Akai. Uh, it's really crap because it can only do one sample but then in a really, really nice uh, uh, crushed bit rate. Um, uh, yeah, 12 bits and you have these little sliders. You can, uh, I mean, there's enough uh, movies on YouTube of people doing that. So I, I skipped that one uh, for demonstration. And uh, also the Alesis MIDI Verb 2. Yeah, I'm gonna show this uh, chord monopoly through it. I'm just gonna play an arpeggiator. It's a little bit crackly because it's old, but if you don't touch it, so you got this really spacious, uh, crazy, uh, intense reverb. And I'm kind of uh, more into uh, old reverbs, um, especially 12-bit reverbs uh, or, uh, that don't sound too realistic. I, I think modern reverbs that are so realistic are a little bit scary for me because you have a kind of uncanny valley that it sounds so realistic that it feels uncomfortable. And I guess um, it, it's nice when the reverb is a little bit crappy than the brain uh, can think oh, that's it's more relaxing for the brain or something. I got a Roland uh, dimensional space reverb here too. Also a really nice um, late 90s, uh, mid 90s uh, reverb. Some uh, synthesizers and sonic. And here's a more old sampler crap, the S900, the Roland uh, MKS100 digital sampler. I think it was the first sampler from uh, Roland. I actually traded this in 1994 for a cork Monopoly. And uh, there was a pretty bad deal I guess, in, in, in the long run, because this is worth, I don't know, 50 euros these days. Um, yeah, so uh, Novation Nova also got that. Uh, Roland JD800. Um, the 90s flagship from Roland. Um, is it? Uh, this is instant uh, 90s ambient sound. Uh, if you into Pete Namluk, I don't know if he used one of these, but it sounds so uh, like that, right? <laughs> These really tripped out weird sounds you can make with this, um, with, with a kind of digital edge to it and you have the... Uh, ab absolutely perfect for making pads like this. And then you have this weird like... Like filter that steps, which some people go like... Mm -hmm filter with stepping things but it, it gives it character you know
Also instant uh, effects, records, 90 Pete Nam look style. Whatever. Then you got all these sliders to uh, tweak about. So, yeah, fun. Uh, some more stuff uh, absolutely essential for uh, soundtrack work is, uh, of course, FM synthesis. Uh, different than the little uh, PSS keyboard is uh, this uh, Reface DX, which is kind of the future of uh, FM synthesis and um, yeah this sounds also very uh, instant soundtrack you can just play stuff like this a bit like a, a, a tecra or afix twin um, and i got this uh, dutch uh, made uh, programmer let you hear some more. It's a D D Tronics uh, programmer for this, so you can like. lead uh. but the thing that absolutely sucks is that there's no uh, modulation uh, wheel I don't know why they didn't think of that um, also it doesn't have aftertouch or anything or to make it because it would be cool if you could like meow but um, yeah I don't know they were, they were lazy at, uh, at Yamaha but it, it's still a fantastic little uh, little keyboard and um, yeah, here I just got like a Fostex uh, four-track recording for a cassette tape uh, thing. Uh, I use it as a sub-mixer to uh, mix all these uh, things together so it goes into my uh, main mixer over there. Here I have a, um, also maybe not obscure but uh, not very popular synthesizer, the Roland D10, which is kind of like a, a budget version of the legendary D50 and in the 90s uh, everybody had a Roland D10 or uh, the rec version the 110 because it was uh, really cheap and it was also incredibly boring because uh, editing it is it's really uh, horrible a pain because uh, it has this little screen and they made it like uh, like Roland said don't edit me you know and just play the boring uh, preset sound which is kind of a, a, a sad thing because this uh, synth is capable of some fantastic um, dreamy great pads and um, so if, 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 if you have too much time to spend, you can um, spend a couple of days with the Roland D10 and make like... Some uh, stuff like this. Um, exit. Uh, this is used in the soundtrack too because it, it has kind of like a, um, uh, also a Alps, uh, like cows with cowbells in a meadow. Because uh, scenes play in the Alps, uh, that's why, uh, in the mountains. And here we have a Akai X7000 which is also a really crap sampler, uh, but an incredibly powerful sound. Uh, it's 12-bit also, uh, actually sampled uh, Roland Jupiter 8 uh, arpeggio in it. And 
I, I like to sample uh, arpeggios or little sequences I play and so I can play these sequences uh, on a keyboard. You can really hear the power of the 12-bit again. Especially if you play it slow, uh, on a slower note it becomes like a evaporating or like a molasses, like really droopy. Like. Also, yeah, it, it, it sounds so nice because, like I said, with that 12-bit uh, uh, reverb thing that I don't like, uh, reverbs that are too fancy, um, if it, it, it compresses the sound into a more understandable um, uh, yeah, image for the brain or something. So it's, uh, yeah, that, that relaxes the, the mind if you put uh, stuff into 12-bit or same with cassette tape because it, uh, it, it takes out of unnecessary information and uh, just gives you the basics so you don't have to think too much to uh, listen or something. Here we got uh, Jupiter 8 like uh, yeah, I'm also not gonna play that everybody knows what that is. Here's a summit from Novation. Of course I uh, did some work on the presets when the synth came out. This is a, a bit of a prototype so it's, it's falling apart. It's not representable for the real uh, uh, Novation uh, uh, summits. So uh, just so you know. And um, well this is of course uh, well, one of the great British uh, synthesizers uh, of the past uh, few years. Um, also says like on it Oxford oscillators like if you go like oh it's Oxford oscillators here uh, but it's, uh, you can have these really almost Commodore 64 SID chip pulse with modulation and then you can have keyboard split so you can be playing this and then go just like have an arpeggiator on the other part. with a different sound. So. And it has effects too, so. Well, lots of fun, the Novation uh, Summit. And it's got these cool little uh, green uh, lights here. And if you check this, if you, if you go to A, it turns blue. It's like really, I, I, like, I like colored lights. So this really gives me great uh, enjoyment. Yeah, that, that's about it, I guess, for the stuff I use in this uh, soundtrack. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, little uh, tour or uh, what is it? infomercial about the Lego Welt Studio here in the Die Hague, the Netherlands. Bye bye!